this is Angela and welcome to my channel. As a self-employed artist, it's vital for me to have a strong online presence. Not only do I have to find the best ways to present my art, I also have to constantly think about the business side of things. In my experience, the easiest way to monetize my art is by having an online shop. In today's video, I'll show you guys how I build a new online shop using Wix.com. If you haven't heard of Wix before, Wix is a powerful online platform that allows you to manage and design your online presence. This is actually the second part of a two-part series sponsored by Wix.com. In the first video, I went over the basics of building a portfolio website. If you don't have a website yet, head over to the first video for a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build a portfolio website for artists. If you already have a website and you're just really excited to start selling your artwork and merchandise on an online shop, but you don't really know where to start or what platform to choose, then this is the right video for you. Before I go into the technical aspect of how to build an online shop on Wix, let me go over some basics of having an online shop. I'll briefly talk about product, inventory, shipping rates, and pricing. If you are an artist just like me, there are quite a few product options for you. You can sell your art as postcards, booklets, prints, t-shirts, canvas bags, stickers, ceramics, anything you can think of or anything you've seen other people selling. Once you've decided on products that suit your art, now it's time to start ordering inventory. Ordering a few samples before you go for the big batch. Before you place your order, make sure you have a rough idea of how many products you think you can sell in a month or in a year because you don't want a huge pile of inventory piled up in your closet just collecting dust. Once you have your inventory at home ready to go, now it's time to investigate into shipping rates. Go to your local post office and ask for the rates for domestic and international shipping based on the weight of your product. Look into letter mail if you're only shipping paper products. If you want to have the option of tracking, know that it will be much more expensive. And lastly, it's time for you to decide the price of your product. You can base the pricing on similar products found on artists similar to your style, or you can decide on the price based on the printing cost plus how much money you want to make per product. Just make sure not to price it too expensive because that will scare away your customers. Find out your target consumer's age group and think about how much they can afford. Now that we've covered the basics of running an online shop, let's start building one. Open up your web browser, Type in the link below or copy it over from the description box and we can get started. Okay, so now you've copied over the link, just click into create your store. If you already have a Wix account, log in right now. If you don't, just register a new account. Go back to my first video and follow the step-by-step -step tutorial to create the main framework of your website. Before we set up your Wix store, we're going to take a look at business e-commerce plans. Click Upgrade at the bottom left corner and you will see three business plan options. Pick whichever plan that works for your online shop. You can go for a yearly option or a monthly option, however the monthly plan will not include a free domain. After you've chosen a business plan, we can go ahead and add Wix Store to your existing website. We can do this by going to Add Apps, scroll down and choose Wix Stores. Click Add to Site and Wix Store will be added to your existing website. So just click on Get Started and we're going to go back to our main dashboard. So here we can see all the store options are added to the dashboard. We're going to Products and selecting all the existing products except one, leaving that one as a template. So deleting all the rest and we're going to go into this one product and start editing it. Getting rid of all the existing images, we're going to add images you can upload media either from your computer or from your G Drive or any other form of cloud storage. So after I've loaded in all of the images, I'm going to drag my pre-created thumbnail as the cover. You can also add a video onto your product page, which I highly recommend. This will help your customers visualize the product. So just scrolling down, we're going to change the name to our product name, which is Japan Postcard Set. Under Ribbon, I'm going to add in Best Seller. Adding in the price, and you can put this price on sale if needed. You can do this individually for each product. So I'm actually going to not have anything in the description because I'm going to include all the info in the additional info sections. Under Product Info, I'm going to include everything my customer needs to know about this product. I'm going to delete the return and refund policy because I don't plan on having that. As for shipping option, 
Just enter everything that you found out from your local post office. So you can add product options if you're selling things like t-shirts or anything that needs to have different options. I'm going to track my inventory and enter the accurate inventory for this product. So scrolling back up, I'm going to create a collection. This postcard collection will contain all of my postcard products. So after you finish adding in your first product, if you go back to the dashboard, Wix actually reminds you of the two next steps that you need to do payment methods and shipping region. You can easily set up payment options by logging into PayPal as well as registering on Stripe. It will only take you a few minutes. As for shipping regions, I'm going to add in a special region for United States because I'm in Canada and it's cheaper to ship to United States than anywhere else in the world. So in the shipping drop-down menu, you have quite a few options. I recommend rate by product or flat rate, depending on how heavy your individual products will weigh. For now, I'm going to enter a flat rate just to show you guys the functions on this page. You have the option of offering free shipping when the customer buys over a certain amount, which could be a good option to entice them to buy more. You also have local delivery and pickup option, which can come in handy after the pandemic is over. So I just went ahead and changed the rates for my three regions. Before we move on, I want to show you guys how to set up your sales tax. Check with your local tax authority or accountant to find out if you are required to collect tax for your online shop. I live in Alberta, Canada, and my sales falls under $30,000, therefore I qualify as a small supplier, and it's my choice to charge the 5% GST or not. If you do need to charge sales tax, you can just go into settings, store tax, and you can either set it up manually or automate your tax with Avalara. Now that we've finished the three initial steps, we're going to go back into our shop and continue editing it. Let's take a look at how it looks right now under preview. If I click into my product, everything seems to be displaying okay. The video is playing fine, good resolution and clarity for customers to see. When I click add to cart, a mini cart pops open. This is something I'm going to edit later. So going back to the editor, I'm going to edit my product page by going to settings, layout, you can test out a few layout options and see which one works for you. I'm going with classic. Same as thumbnail options, I'm going with the default one. So under settings, you can choose what the add to cart button does. And in design info section, you can either collapse all of your infos or you can keep it in tabs, which I think looks cleaner. You also have the option to edit the button style. I'm going with the rounded button. You can also edit the color of the button. So there's a lot of customization that you can do. So I noticed I'm missing a shopping cart. So I just went into add, store, shopping cart and dragged it over to the desired spot. I clicked into settings and now I can edit the icon for my shopping cart. So I just picked one that I liked and I sliced it down. You can scale anything on the page by using free transformation. So now I'm going to edit the mini cart. I'm changing the background and the fill color of the mini cart. So in preview, my mini cart looks pretty nice now. Clicking into view cart, I'm brought to the full cart page. I'm going to quickly edit the full cart or the my cart page by going into settings. And I want to make sure the continue shopping link actually links to my shop. Going into design, I'm changing the PayPal button to a rounded button to match my other add to cart button. I'm also changing the color of my links to make it more visible on my page. Just testing out all the links to see if everything is directing to the page desired. I noticed that the shopping cart actually opens up the mini cart instead of my cart. So I'm going back to the editor, clicking onto my shopping cart, click settings, and I'm changing it so that it opens the full cart page instead of a mini cart. So just testing out the links one final time to see if everything works. So now my shopping cart links to my full cart page. Seems like everything is functional, so I'm just going to add in all of my remaining products. When you click add new product, you can also add a digital file. You can upload a tutorial, a PDF, anything that's downloadable. So going back to my shop page, I'm going to change the settings. And you can display either just a collection on your main shop page or all products. 
it's up to you. If I go into layout, I can change how many products is displayed in one column. And I would do this if I have more products. But because I only have six products at the moment, I'm going to space them out and have them a bit bigger on my page. Going into settings, you also have the option of adding an add to cart button on your main shop page. This will encourage the visitor to buy stuff right away. So just previewing my shop page and my product page, I noticed for the Vancouver postcard set, all of my images are cropped. So I'm going into the editor, clicking on the product, click setting, going into layout, and make sure my images are fit and not cropped. So now all of the images are displayed in their original ratio and size. Everything looks pretty good, but before I move on, I'm going to quickly check the mobile version because a large percentage of your visitors would be on their phone. So it's pretty vital to check that the mobile version is working just as well. I noticed in the product page, the title is not centered and I think it will look better centered. So I'm going back into editor. However, I cannot edit it under the mobile version. I'm switching back to desktop, clicking into settings, and under product details, I'm centering the alignment. Now going back to the mobile version, everything is centered on the page and I think it looks better. Now that the mobile version is working, I'm saving all of the changes and taking one last look at my shop to see if everything looks okay. If you're happy with your shop, at this point, you can go ahead and publish your website. So all of the changes you've made so far will be visible to visitors. Just to check everything is working perfectly fine, I am going on my website without being on Wix to check if my shop is functional. I'm going to test it out by adding in a few things into my cart and see if I can check out. So the mini cart is working fine. I'm able to add a note in the full cart page. I can go back and continue shopping. Just going to add one more product. You can see that my shipping has increased because I've changed it to rate per product. The weight has doubled, therefore the shipping rate has doubled. So when I click into checkout, it brings me to the Stripe checkout page. And the PayPal checkout page works as well, just takes me to the PayPal login page. So that's working fine. I'm not going to actually place an order, so just deleting these from my cart. I don't want to waste the transaction fees. So that's it, I just finished setting up my online shop on Wix. So that's it for this tutorial, I hope it was helpful to you. If you're just starting out as an artist, it's probably really daunting to think about the business side of things. Back in school, they never taught us how to monetize our art aside from staying in a 9 to 5 job. But in today's day and age, there's so much opportunities online. And starting an online shop is a great way to transition to become a full-time freelance artist. Finding the right platform will make this process easier for you. Wix e-commerce option is highly customizable. You can display products in your local currency, as well as processing payment options such as credit card, debit card, and PayPal. These are the key factors to consider when you're choosing a platform to run your online shop. So if you think Wix is a good option for you, don't forget to use the link below and then you can get started. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video.